right, here we go again. Uh, my next little project here is putting the uh, axle and uh, brakes back together on this uh, this one. Um, that's the hub there. And uh, I put this back together uh, a few years ago. When before I started working on this thing, I had to steal some parts on off of this one for my other bus. So. <laughs> Now I've uh, now I got to replace the parts on here. So um, uh, all the parts uh, that are there, I'm going to reuse, and they're all good. Um, I just needed a uh, brake drum. Five hundred and fifty dollars for a brake drum. How do you like that? And uh, this seal seal retainer. Which goes onto the uh, back side of the hub there. That was uh, that was damaged on the other bus, so I stole one off of this uh, off this bus for it. So that's the replacement there. Uh, right at the moment, I am taking the DD3 brake chamber apart. I got it over on the bench, but that's where it mounts up in there. Um, and I got to take it apart and the locking mechanism I suspect is the what is the problem is is uh, leaking air so I have to uh, pull that apart and have a look at it get the uh, parts out of it and then take it over or take the parts over to the local supply place here bus supply and um, get some replacements I've I uh, talked to them already they have lots of parts in stock so it's just a matter of getting them out and figuring out what I need and, and then uh, over and pick them up so anyways uh, hang on a second and there's the brake chamber there I'm just going I'm just pulling the uh, locking rings off of it here right now and um, then I'll take it apart and the let's see where's the there's the locking port uh, air supply there and uh, locking mechanisms right down in here so I have to um, pull it all apart and get to that and I believe I'm not going to look in the manual again but I believe it said if I remember correctly that the drain port should be at the bottom and on this one somebody's installed with us installed it the brain drain port to the top so I'm not positive on that. I'll have to uh, I'll have to double check that, but that's just what I seem to remember. So I think I have to flip it over. I think this is uh, I think this goes to the to the bottom, not to the top. But anyway, once I get to that point, I'll film that. So I'll just take little segments as I take this thing apart and give you guys an idea how it comes apart. <clears throat> so as I was afraid of, oh, sorry, oh, excuse me, as I uh, start tearing this thing apart, uh, because this drain was at the top, this thing's in pretty rough shape. There aren't even any ro lock rollers left in it. I'm going to pull this cover off of here but there's uh, it looks like the uh, either either it screwed up and somebody took the rollers out or they've been I don't know anyways there's, no, there's nothing left in there anyhow so anyway you turn it apart I have some spare parts so hopefully I can make one work I hate it when people do stuff like this look at this Springs rotted right in half. I'd vent up. There's been moisture, so much moisture in there that this piston is done. Surprisingly, the diaphragm seemed to be okay. But, anyways, I'll just keep, keep taking it apart. I had to drill the heads off 
<clears throat> the screws so I could get this piston off. Gee, I wonder why the lock mechanism didn't work. Sheesh. I haven't seen anything this bad in a long time. Well, see if we can make something work. So fortunately I have enough uh, uh, parts, spare parts, to, uh, that I don't need too much from, uh, from the bus supply place. I <laughs> uh, had a new housing, or not a new housing, it's a used one, but it's been cleaned up and everything. Uh, I think I showed you guys this part and this one here, which I can't get out of this. They're just, they ain't coming out of there. And uh, so this whole assembly here, I'll just throw away um, and uh, use this one. Diaphragms are good. Um, out of another one of the, like this, this piece here, which, you know, oh, oh, that one's hooped. The spring is hooped. Had a new spring. Um, I could probably reuse this if I, you know, clean this up and reuse it, but I have another one anyway, so I'll use that with all the associated parts. All this stuff was uh, in the box with, with, um, with all the rest of the, you know, the, the parts. So basically all I need is the O-rings and uh, a set of these rollers that aren't rollers anymore. Anyways, there's eight of those, so not too bad. Got the parts ordered. I'll go over uh, and uh, pick them up uh, this afternoon. Uh, I have a new new clevis pin which uh, goes into there. So even has a new boot. So that's good. I'll um, just shows you the importance of doing things correctly. You know, whoever installed this in the uh, in there, put it in upside down, and that's the the effect of doing that. You know, simple little thing, but but uh, that's what happens. So anyway, uh, the you know, I'm, obviously it doesn't help that the bus sat for years and years with that not being used and in service, but still, um, you know, if it had been dry, the other side's fine. So if uh, it had been dry and, and installed properly, then uh, this probably wouldn't have happened. Anyways, enough rambling. So I'll, uh, I'm going to start doing the brakes and, and uh, doing the, uh, putting the hub and everything all onto it. And, uh, and then when I get the parts for this, which should be later on this afternoon, then I'll start uh, putting this back together and reinstalling it. And all the parts are here now, or will be here tomorrow morning, or they're at down in Blaine. Just have to go get them <coughs> for the cooling system. So as soon as I have this back together, then I will uh, start on the cooling system. Okay, so I got the parts I needed for the, to put this brake chamber back together. I had all the parts except the two O-rings and the rollers. Well, anyways, there's what a new roller looks like. A little better than that one, huh? No wonder it didn't work. Anyways, I didn't even think there was rollers in there when I first uh, took it apart, but yep, they were in there. They just didn't look much like rollers. <laughs> Anyways, so we'll start uh, putting this thing together. It's actually pretty simple, but um, <clears throat> anyways, if you wanna, I'll try and kind of do this step by step. So we'll just lubricate the O-ring. You can see it there and install it into the groove the channel there that's what actually seals the air and then this uh, this piston goes in next so I'll lube that up and 
next this big, uh, I'll call it a race. There's probably a, another word for, name for it, but uh, it goes in there, and then the uh, the uh, rollers go in uh, into that cavity. So I'll do that next. There's eight rollers, and um, this inner surface of this piece here is tapered. So as that piston pushes those rollers up, they are allowed to move away and expand uh, off of this shaft. So when the your maxis or your I should say your park breakers is applied, the the diaphragm on the end of this piston pushes the pushes this forward and applies the brake. And as long as you have air pressure that holds the brake on and at the same time as it, this is applying the air is exhausted out of that port there and the that piston drops down and these rollers drop down into that that um, into this cavity here farther and grip this that shaft so when you have no air it just keeps the brake applied and then um, when you go to release the brakes, the emergency brake, you apply, air is applied here, that piston pushes those rollers up, releasing the shaft and allowing the, allowing the brake to re release. So anyways, hope that makes sense. Anyways, uh, let's see, this spring goes on next, and then, um, and then this cover. Uh, I gotta replace the O-ring on it, but then, and then this cover goes on, so that's next. A little plastic washer goes on top of the uh, on top of the rollers and this spring that's on top of there this isn't easy to do and hold the camera at the same time and then this cover goes on no oh, one I got to replace that o-ring yet hang on Now there is a, I got the O-ring on there now, uh, there is a, um, a wiper, a spring, I don't know if you can see that in there, and then this retainer that I pre-assembled on there, and uh, so, so these parts have to be replaced too, but I've already done that, so I'll go ahead and install this. Okay, that cover's on now, that wasn't easy to do. There's probably some special press you're supposed to have to compress that spring. I'm trying to do it by hand and put the screws in <laughs> was a bit of a challenge. Um, the only reason I know how to do it is because I read the service manual that I have. So, um, anyways, I'll just continue on here. So the next step here, according to the manual is to apply shop air. So I'll hook an air hose up to that fitting there. That should uh, compress that piston. And then oops, and this spring goes sort of like that. And just like that. And that shaft gets inserted into that bore there. So you apply shop air, push it in, and then take the shop air off and it'll hold it there theoretically we'll see <laughs> and then you can assemble the rest of it because that's uh, compressed and then you can put the, the uh, diaphragms and all that onto it so let's see how that goes and one little important thing that I forgot to mention this little pipe plug goes in that hole and that's the drilled Ch uh, channel for the uh, for the air to go down for that piston. So this this little plug has to be installed in there, or it won't work. So I'm gonna put some sealant on it and put it on. Okay, so you know those rollers are doing what they're supposed to do when you push that piston in there, and it's and then take the shop air off. And it stays. 
which it's doing. So those uh, rollers are gripping the shaft as it's supposed to do. So if it pops back out again, you know, it won't stay in place, then uh, then uh, the rollers aren't doing their job and there's something is assembled incorrectly. So, so far so good. Uh, if I put air to that right now, that piston would come flying out of there across the room. But uh, the um, rollers are holding it in place where it should be and so it's all good. Now I can put the diaphragms on. One thing I should probably clarify is these brakes are not a spring brake. They're not a maxi or you know that kind of brake. Uh, they do not have the big heavy spring in them that um, that will fly across the room and kill you uh, when you're when you uh, when they come apart. Um, years ago, you could do the same thing with a maxi brake, and you could replace the the uh, diaphragms. Uh, and you know that was a dangerous operation. <laughs> These uh, all all the new maxi brakes are they're all sealed units. Basically, when that goes, you just throw it away and buy another one. Uh, but these are not like that. That's just a light spring. I mean, if you put air to that, you know, there's enough tension on there to, uh, you know, it would fly across the room, but it's not going to, not going, it's not going to fly a thousand miles an hour. Um, we, Dad and I saw a, uh, a uh, chain, uh, tire chain one time, uh, catch a, a uh, the, the clamp ring on a maxi pot, tore it off, and that that thing went through. The bottom of, of a uh, trailer and halfway through a lo load of bagged cement so there's a lot of uh, tension or a lot of uh, energy in one of those these aren't like that uh, you can just push that like a, basically i just push that piston in there by hand so you know there's some spring tension on it but it's not uh, it's not dangerous you can take these things apart and and uh, they're not going to kill you okay so there's the first diaphragm in and the clamp ring on. You have to remember to uh, clock this uh, assembly here around to where it needs to be, where it was when it came off, so that uh, your airlines and everything will line up. Um, so now the next diaphragm goes on. Now, the there's supposed to be a, they call it a, what the heck do they call it now? They called it a uh, diaphragm separator and I don't know what it's made out of these never had one in it so I you know I don't know what it uh, I'm assuming it was made out of rubber and it just kind of sat on there but I don't really know nobody stocked them and uh, it didn't have one when it came out came apart so I'm assuming that it's uh, optional Okay, and there it's pretty much all reassembled. I just have to put the uh, front end back on here. The, there's just a dust shield over the top of the front. Come on. Uh, dust shield that goes on the front here. There's the gasket. This is the dust shield. Uh, the boot and the clevis. The shaft here, it just goes in and uh, there's a little snap ring there that snaps into a uh, groove down in the bottom of there. So um, that's pretty much it. Okay, it's all back together, ready to go back on. So just so everybody's aware, I have never done this before. All I did is read the manual, service manual, and took it apart following their recommendations and put it back together again. So if I didn't do something right, I guess we'll find out about it. Um, pretty simple, but uh, you know, just so everybody's, you know, I'm certainly no expert as, as uh, Dad so eloquently pointed out. <laughs> Um, and uh, something else that I found out is there is a right and a left to these. So my theory or my uh, thought is somebody put a driver's side, you know, on the passenger side. Maybe they didn't have another one. I don't know, whatever. Anyways, they, um, so that's why it was upside down. Um, 
because this is a, this is the correct uh, passenger side one, which is opposite of this one, which was on there. So I'm thinking that uh, probably what happened is they didn't have the correct one and thought that they could just flip it over and and it would be okay. But eh, well, I guess it worked for a while. But anyways, that's my story. Oh, and one final thing. Don't forget to grease that fitting. That uh, greases the lock, that whole lock mechanism. Keeps it lubricated, so give it a couple of squirts once in a while. Mine probably would have lasted a lot longer if somebody bothered to do that. Okay, so here's the uh, brake chamber all reinstalled, all adjusted and working properly. I didn't uh, film any of this uh, putting the brake drum and hub and axle and all that in. I was just, to be honest with you, I was just too frustrated. That was about the most frustrating job I've done in a long time. A lot of mismatched parts, stuff that uh, people had done earlier that were just not right. And uh, <clears throat> the supply store is uh, 45 minutes away. You know, uh, I spent, I don't know how much time running back and forth there getting the right parts. Fortunately, they had most everything in stock, but still. Anyways, I didn't film any of it, so sorry, but that's the way she goes. Uh, but the, uh, you know, everything else is, uh, it's all ready to go now. I just have to put the, uh, put the wheels on, so I'll get to that uh, soon. Uh, working on the cooling system right at the moment, so I'll video that as a separate video. So, all done, finally.